Welcome to the build video of my second electric surfboard. This is a continuation of my first surfboard where I kind of use the exact same electronic parts, but I use a different board, a board that I created myself. The shape of the surfboard has improved on two points. The surfboard has much more buoyancy now. It will stay afloat without giving throttle. The second advantage of the surfboard is that it is now just flat. It doesn't have boxes on top anymore. The only thing I want to change now are the impellers. These are bad, I can't recommend them. I have lots of maintenance on them and they rust at the bearings. Even though I used the correct press to inject grease in it. So I think a version 3 is coming as well next year. Okay, to start the build I bought EPS foam. I bought multiple small pieces because I couldn't find one big piece. All the pieces are glued together to make one big block. I used offset stacking to create extra strength. I made a hot wire cutter to cut the foam easily. I didn't put wood inside the foam to make the board stronger, because the board will be 80 centimeters thick. I made a small ramp for the front side and then basically straight all the way back. A template for the curvature of the surfboard. So after shaping the surfboard, I sanded the surfboard quite a lot, also off camera. This is the design of the box that will hold the impellers. I cut these pieces with a laser cutter. The pieces are 3 mm thick. I used simple glue to glue the pieces together. Now I will use epoxy to make a really good bond between the pieces and to make the box really strong as well. Now together with glass fiber it really makes up for the only 3 mm plywood. So now I'm going to make the cutouts for the boxes. I have in total two boxes, one that house the impellers and one that house the batteries. This is the battery box. Yes, my methods are a little bit questionable. But it fits. Now I'm really gluing in the two boxes. So here I'm using a epoxy filler, this is to fill up the biggest holes and dents in my board. I also used it on the surface of my surfboard. This to avoid the epoxy seeping in the EPS foam.
finally adding glass fiber epoxy to the surfboard. In total I did two layers at least and on some places even three or four layers, for example the corners. Make sure if you use EPS foam to build your surfboard as well to make use of epoxy resin and not polyester resin. Polyester resin will bite into the foam. So on top I'm also using the epoxy filler, this to make the top extra strong since I will be standing on it. Here I'm making a wooden frame on top of the box of the impellers. This needs to be very strong because I want to be able to stand on it as well. So again quite a lot of epoxy filler is being used here. Everything needs to be watertight, so everywhere there needs to be glass fiber epoxy. If you get water in the foam inside the surfboard, that's very bad. So here I made a hole to connect the battery box with the impeller box. This hole also functions like a vent for the EPS foam, which is necessary because it might expand in the sun and breaks the epoxy when the EPS foam is not properly vented. These inserts are used to screw in the impellers. Here I'm gluing in the inserts. At the bottom of the surfboard I will also make another layer of glass fiber epoxy to make the inserts also waterproof. So after epoxying my whole surfboard and fitting in the motors I came to quite a bad realization. This one I just mounted and look. Yeah that's not aligned well. So what I did wrong was this whole sheet here. This, this wooden sheet here at the bottom should have been flipped. This one is correctly, so this one is, well it's not in fixed here in yet, but it aligns perfectly. So that's nice. So this one is good, it aligns everywhere, but this one doesn't align here. But what I'm going to do now is leave this plate as is and I will just uh, drill four new holes and make this one a little bit bigger and fill this up with a 3D print. Well, this little moon fits perfect. So this is the result after also a layer of epoxy around it. So use silicon to make a seal between the impellers and the box. The screws in the back of the impeller I screw in with grease as well to block the water that might come through the threads of the screws. Need to make some small adjustments to the cable of the ESCs. Each ESC has two XT60 connectors for a total of four. From 80 volts to 12 volts, from 12 volts to 5 volts. So yeah, that's a step down of like 70 volts to 5 volts. The battery that's connected is 18S. This voltage step down is necessary for the receiver, which requires 5 volts instead of 70. Here I'm basically putting all the wiring in, so the ESCs can be connected to the battery and the receiver gets feed electricity as well. Well, okay, it's not very pretty, but I will give it a color soon as well. 